Hello, 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 friends. Simpilot here. Welcome back to another Microsoft Flight Simulator tutorial. As you see in the background, we are into the big boys league and starting with Cessna Citation CJ4, which is going to be the first turbine engine or jet engine aircraft in the tutorial series. Uh, the citation is using a GPS and navigation system, in other words, avionics system uh, named FMS 3000. And learning this system will make it much more easier for you to understand the flight management computer in the Boeing aircrafts because it has the same look, pretty much the same text and menu options and. Uh, this will be a good starting point for, let's say, the 747 when we get there. Uh, I am still using the old version of the sim. I haven't updated with the newest patch, which is 1.9.3. And I already heard that it introduced some more bugs. So I'll try to stick to the old uh, version as much as I possibly can uh, because of the mods that I'm using uh, all bro broke after the patch so I won't be able to use any of those and there is one that I am using for this aircraft too. Uh, I will share the link down in the description field of the video if you want to check that out and the developer is well aware of the issues that are brought with the newest patch so if you already updated your sim you might want to wait a little bit before downloading uh, release that works with the newest patch the other thing i want to point out is the discord server and i want to thank everybody who took the time to join me on discord and ask their questions and over the weekend i am planning to do an other video uh, go back to maybe g1000 to answer some questions or go through multiple units in one video just to answer the questions that came from the subscribers and we have a question that I am going to answer in this tutorial, which is going to be the RNAV approach, which we haven't looked into yet. And we will discuss about that uh, probably in the second part of this video, where we do the full flight and departure approach, arrival, all that good stuff. So without further ado, let's jump into the sim and start taking a look into the cockpit. As you see, we are in a cold and dark state. This is the cockpit. It looks intimidating. There are a lot of buttons and switches and whatnot. But we will go and do a scan from left to right to explain what each panel is. So this one over here is your fuse panel for DC power and the systems. This doesn't have any function in the sim, but in real life, these fuses pop out if something trips the fuse or the breaker. Going over here, let me zoom in a little bit and get rid of the yoke. This panel over here is your COM audio panel. You can turn on and off your COM radio volume and you can turn the receivers on and off. Um, these two are in off at the moment. You can also turn the NEV1, NEV2 radios where you listen to uh, the Morse code from the VOR stations or DME stations. And same for the DME. This is your microphone volume. This is uh, muting your microphone. This is your ADF volume, which we haven't looked into ADF. I am planning a video about ADF as well. And the rest is in up. This is your electrical panel where you turn on your batteries and then your emergency lights, flight displays. This too is in up. Generator switches to turn the generators on the left and right engines on and the avionics switch. This panel down here this is your oxygen supply if things go bad. This is the oxygen mask microphone, which is in up. Oxygen control is also in up. Uh, these two as well. Fuel boost manual. So this overrides the fuel pumps and boosts fuel into the engines left and right. In normal operations, you don't use them. In emergency situations, when you need to boost fuel into the engines for a potential failure, that becomes handy. This is the heating system and this aircraft is equipped with AC 
so you can turn the pilot fan increase decrease or keep it at normal level this is your climate control normal compressor on which turns on the AC doesn't do anything in the sim but they are operational for your fun if you want to play with those during flight cockpit temperature increases or de decreases the temperature to cold or hot based on your preference these two are the ignition switches if you want to manually ignite the engines for some potential failure otherwise you don't use these when you are starting the engine these two doesn't work so I'm gonna skip this this is going to dump the pressure the cabin pressure when you are up high in the air and this is the pressure control switch which is in up at the moment so this is the air source uh, that gets into the cabin from left normal right or fresh air this is your parking brake and the rest doesn't work over here we will talk about this panel when we are discussing the FMC and the PFD MFD screens because these bring some menus on those screens this is your anti-ice systems wing ice switches uh, engine ice switches tail and pa uh, pilot slash static ice switches and then the wing ice light to take a look at the wing to see the icing uh, or potential icing during night flights over here this is your PFD uh, control button switches buttons and switches your baro um, barometric pressure uh, knob to set your barometric pressure and then this navigates in the menus which we will look into this uh, when we power the aircraft this is your FMC flight management computer it's also known as FMS we will take a look at this when we power the aircraft so I'm gonna skip for now this is your exterior light switches beacon, nav lights, strobe, taxi landing lights and logo lights these two knobs control the menus and this is the uh, panel lights to dim or uh, increase the panel lighting TCAS is in op at the moment pulse light is uh, self-explanatory and these are the passenger seat belt and safety light is off but seat belt light is functional with the mod the standard aircraft doesn't have this functioning down below is your engine panel and the throttle as well as flaps and the speed brakes and then engine starter switches are over here this is your aileron trim which uh, corrects the bank if you are receiving some wind that it results banking to one side usually autopilot counters this if you are using autopilot while flying but if you are manually flying uh, trimming the ailerons will keep you straight and level this is the pitch trim nose up nose down and then down below we have the if I can show that's the cabin right there maybe like this I can go down more this is your rudder trim and this is the secondary elevator elevator trim which you can open the guard and enable I think this is also not functional in the default aircraft but the mod gives it some function I don't know if it does anything I haven't tested it yet up to the top is your autopilot panel your pretty much standard buttons there the top panel is completely in up at the moment this is uh, the course knob that adjusts your course and pressing on it centers the course your flight director your vertical speed mode or VNAV mode VNAV mode I think still is not working your uh, vertical speed selector wheel your flight level change wheel which also can be adjusted the speed can be adjusted by this knob uh, when you are on FLC mode and pressing on the button will match your current speed to this when you turn this mod on now mode half bank is going to limit your bank angle to 15 degrees rather than 30 your heading select mode and heading adjustment knob 
back course again that back course we haven't simulated this but it's used for uh, runways who has a single beacon for ILS that is used for both ends of the runway and if you are approaching from the opposite run, uh, end of the runway and your uh, course deviation indicator is showing downwards you engage this to correct that uh, heading problem your altitude hold mode and your altitude selection knob yaw damper and autopilot uh, and this transfers the autopilot to right or left PFD and this is the autopilot and yaw damper disconnection switch when you are going to take control let's say in an approach so this is the basic buttons and at the top you have three switches to turn on the floodlights and that's I think about it for the Cessna's cabin over here are the same uh, radio panel that is also here maybe we can swing by to that side and take a closer look and the cockpit voice recorder is not functional and that is again it cabin fan co-pilot fan for cabin temperature settings which doesn't do anything in the simulator because you there is no technology that makes you feel how cold it is in the simulator at the moment maybe 20 years from now <laughs> and this is your avionics fuse panel and circuit breakers which doesn't have any function in the sim i haven't tested any failures though maybe in the failures they are simulated and pop out and that display over here is your angle of attack display all right guys this is about it let's take a look at how we power this uh, baby so to start the power uh, process power up, power up process we need to turn on the battery first and this will uh, display the MFD and then the avionics switch goes to dispatch mode until after the engines are running this aircraft doesn't have an APU and it's not equipped with thrust reversers so keep that in mind so as you see some systems turned on and the wing anti-ice and uh, engine anti-ice light switches are on I am not sure if it's like this in the real aircraft or if this is a bug that makes these buttons light up when you power the aircraft I have to investigate that so how you start the engines because you don't want to stay on battery power too long which will drain the battery and you have a warning here saying bad amp which means the aircraft is drawing uh, amps or electricity from the batteries and you have to start the engines as soon as possible the generator switches are turned on by default so you don't need to touch any of those all you need to do is start the left engine starter and we can take a look because it's going to start to spool or it already started to spool and you watch for the N1 here oh I'm sorry N2 and wait until it reaches 20% which is going to happen shortly there we go and what you do is you open this cover and then hit the run button which will introduce fuel and then you will hear the engine firing up and you wait until everything stabilizes <coughs> before you start the second engine and it should stabilize I think around 67 69% we will hear see in a second when the oil temperature reaches 60, 69 67 and when N2 is I think around 65 um, engine stabilizes and you can turn on the second engine and as you see the M1 is rising as well let's wait and see where it stabilizes 59 percent so 60 and you see it is stable now with 20 percent m1 60 percent and two which means we can go ahead and start the second engine we follow the same process turn on the engine uh, ignition wait until n2 hits 20 percent and then we will introduce fuel by selecting the run button under the cover we are getting to 20 percent shortly 18 19 now we can 
open the cover guard, hit run and then close it. <coughs> now we are going to wait until this engine also stabilizes and then we can turn on the avionics and start taking a look at what's displayed on the screens. I am trying to keep this video at 30 minutes uh, when it comes to the length of the video so we might leave the flight planning stage to the next video if it gets too long I don't want to bore you guys but just to pro want to provide valuable information in a short amount of time so looks like our engine 1 is also stable now we can go over here and turn on the avionics which will give us both displays so over here in the PFD you have a menu which you can access through here and it gives you some options this rows arc and P position mode is uh, going to display you different uh, modes so if you switch to rows you have to have a flight plan to understand the difference by the way arc is your um, operational mode which means this is what you need to use when you are flying P position is the plan position mode which lets you cycle through the legs of your flight plan under the controls this is your navigation source which can be switched between with the upper um, outer dial of the node you can change it to VOR VOR2 which is your two navigation radios and then back to GPS and same goes uh, for the map source you can use a GPS map source or you can use or you cannot change it in this one the range is your map range so it will increase the range for you when you dial it this zooms out and when you dial in, it in it zooms in and each ring is now 10 nautical miles so if I dial it to 20 each ring will become uh, 20 nautical miles so that's that's how this is displayed on the below you have couple options for your bearing pointer 1 and 2 so which will put the bearing information you can scroll down and make your FMS for bearing pointer 1 that displays the distance to the next waypoint on the screen like in a G1000 or 3000 if you remember those and if you haven't seen those videos I highly suggest to go and watch the uh, tutorial series from the first episode because these uh, tutorials are building on the knowledge from the previous episode and same is true for the bearing pointer 2 you can set it to VOR2 or ADF2 and uh, just to mention here you don't get the FMS on bearing pointer 2 you have only VOR2 and ADF2 options okay to go back you hit the escape button up top which will bring you to the main menu and then the config screen will let you change between the barometric pressure between inches mercury or hectopascals for European countries uh, this is changing your altimeter to meters instead of feet if I change my altitude setting not altimeter altitude I'm sorry let's say 1100 feet let's make it a thousand so that it's even so if I change this source from feet to meters it will change it in the display hopefully I don't know if it's functional yet with the mod but that's what it does and the other one is your angle of attack display you can leave it on which brings it over here you can leave it at auto which brings it when you are climbing on descending or when you are at level flight it disappears and to go back you hit the escape and the last menu here is your reference speeds V1 we rotate V2 is your climb speed and then you can set your approach uh, speed over here VRF is V reference that's your um, 
that's for, at your discretion to use like if you want to cruise at a certain speed you set that speed bug to have a visual representation uh, on the speed tape and the menu under that is going to let you set your radio or barometric minimums by using the outer dial which will set uh, your barometric minimums for this one and when I pass I think when I passed 600 it just went and I need to change this I think this is now displaying meters instead of uh, feet I need to go back and change that in the config menu to ensure we are speaking the same thing so meters off I forgot to turn it off after taking a look at the money let's go back to the references menu and let's try to set our barometric minimum and just we are going to guesstimate something just to have the information displayed over there oops wrong place I'm still getting used to this so now you will see you should see a tape displaying there but I'm not sure why it's not displaying so that's why how you set your minimums maybe it needs you need to be up in the air or it's displayed somewhere else anyway so that's how uh, that's the many options ET is elapsed time that lets you to display that so this is going to let you cycle through the PFD display formats which is a full ring a half ring and nothing more than that this will display the terrain and then weather information in cycles and go back to normal display and this is going to display the TCAS traffic on your PFD uh, this is the range button where you can change the range as well as you see the rings are changing from 10 20 40 and rather than the menu I'd like to use this one uh, it's 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 much more convenient to use it this one is in up and the references menu is go is a shortcut to get to your reference uh, setup menu where you can set your V ref v speed references or barometric minimums okay so that's MFD uh, that's PFD and we have the same menu options for MFD here uh, which is down below upper menu is in up but lower menu will bring the same menu this time for the MFD screen and it has some different options like plan mode you can see your flight plan displayed here uh, TCAS I wasn't able to get this to work nav source is again changing your nav source map symbols is going to let you display the constraints which I find uh, quite handy if you want the navways displayed on the map as you see it's displaying those two waypoint intersections is going to clog your view view quite a bit when your range is set too high so I would I advise not to do it and the zoom button doesn't work because it's for the chart which is not functional in this aircraft at the moment so I usually turn on the constraints and leave the rest off for this menu uh, to go back you again hit the escape key over here and uh, left PFD menu is not operational at the moment and the system test is not operational at the moment uh, that's that's all you have in this uh, menu this is again going to cycle through terrain weather on the MFD screen traffic display system overlay you can put some system overlays I believe or maybe in the future they are going to implement that and that is about it for this screen which leaves us with the FMC so FMC is a little bit more complex than what we have seen so far in the tutorials 
and when you load into the aircraft and power it up first thing you need to do is initialize your position so to do that you normally enter your airport code into this box and we are at Oslo airport which is Echo November Golf Mike but in this mod it's not possible to do it from here what you can do though is to go to the flight plan page add your origin and then go back to uh, your initialization page which you can access from here the IDX and post in it now we see the airport ENGM so you copy that GPS position and paste it here by and when you click it it will copy it to the scratch pad and when you click the button it will uh, paste it to that location which lets your aircraft to initialize where it's sitting at in the world and from there you can plan your flight and our flight will be from Oslo to um, what was this airport I need to remember I'll show you the flight plan so we are going to depart from Oslo which is here and we are going to go to um, Karmoy Haugesund in Norway I selected these two airports because I found some very nice free uh, airport scenery for these two created by uh, I need to take a look at the name um, it's here so I just want to give the guy credit his name is Captain Westad and these two airports they are pretty good and highly detailed so uh, I recommend you download those airports if you want custom scenery in some of the European locations so that's going to be our flight plan uh, for today so let's just enter our destination just to have it in the FMS so destination is going to be Echo November Hotel Delta now we have the magenta line displaying our flight plan so from here now we need to plan our departure and arrival but before doing so I want to enter the route information to do that you see this via and 2 this is the first page and when you hit next it will give you a second page and the page numbers are displayed here so when you are on a menu uh, if you look at the upper right corner this will display how many pages that menu has and you can cycle by pressing the previous or next buttons down below so uh, our first waypoint is going to be Atlap, Atlap, Alpha, Tango, Lima, Alpha, Papa and we are going direct so if it's a direct waypoint route without any airways you enter it to the right side and let's go to the next page from there we are taking uh, an airway which is Papa 600 Papa 600 and we are taking that airway all the way to Ipmod India Papa Mike Oscar Delta so if it's an airway you use the left side if it's a waypoint you use that you travel directly you use the right side when you are uh, creating your flight plan in the FMC and this goes same for the Boeing 747 has a very similar unit and you will see uh, it when we get to there in the tutorial series so from here we are taking a, another airway Zulu 280 uh, to Ulvos which is uniform Lima Victor Oscar Sierra and that is our last pay waypoint before our start so we execute that which enters it into our flight plan as you see here so now we can select our departure and our departure if you sorry about that if you take a look at the flight plan is going to be Alpha 5 Alpha which is this one over here and we are departing from runway 01 left which is already selected for us 
execute now our arrival because we are going to do an Arnoev approach we won't get to choose a star and we will discuss the Arnoev approach when we are doing the flight uh, part of this tutorial but our approach today is going to be if I go here and pull the charts approach is going to be this Arnav GNSS Zulu runway 13 which I can show the chart really quickly and we will discuss what this means when we get there uh, to the flight episode which will be the second video for the Cessna Citation CJ4 so let's select that um, Arnav 13 Zulu and our transition is as you see ASMIT which is also the selected for us so now our flight plan is complete we have our distances we have our uh, vertical profile selected I wish the VNAV was working and we can go and check and as you see it says we have three pages in our flight plan this might be longer this might be shorter depending on your departure destination and how many waypoints you are going to hit uh, en route so next page Atlap IP mode was and flight level as you see that's not the flight level we want to cruise at 40, 42,000 feet no thank you uh, we will change that here in a second azimuth remember this is our transition and then from there Bausa which is right there our initial approach fix and Abmar which is our final approach fix I believe if I'm not mistaken we'll take a look at that yes it is you see the Maltese cross that is the representation of the final approach fix and the altitudes are perfectly matching too okay and we will change this we don't want to be at flight level 420 at runway 13 that's I think a bug so that's the flight plan part covered so from there we selected our flight plan we selected our departure and arrival now we need to calculate our performance right so takeoff performance so runway 01 left runway wind we need to listen to the ADIS for the wind information which I will do right now hopefully why sometimes this frequencies does not work I don't understand I don't know if it's Microsoft Azure that you need to be connected to and internet speed has an effect on it but um, <clears throat> the other way we can check the winds is I'll check it here if the 80s doesn't let's tune to the ground services ground go back and try to tune to the 80s one more time no luck still well I am connected well it's weird it was working now it decided not to work so what we can do is sim toolkit pro is a nice little addition that gives you a lot of information about airports and you can also uh, plan your flights but what we are going to do is go to tools and data pool echo delta what was the echo code echo delta golf mic Oh, I'm sorry. Echo November Golf Mike, which is the Oslo Airport. Now the weather information is here. So it's saying winds are 320 at two knots. So runway wind is going to be 02, which we cannot enter. So I didn't test that part, but I know we can enter it to here, which will have the same effect. Wind. There you go and it will calculate it for us outside air temperature uh, it's not it's not giving it let's just try to pull the meta information one more time can I go back and refresh this temperature is not coming up so but it's over here 
so outside air temperature is 13 degrees so we can use that information that air, aircraft is sensing and then the altimeter is is not displayed how nice maybe I just lost my internet connection let's just do this connect do I have internet now yes I do let's try this one more time to see if we are going to get anything no so for altimeter we can hit the B key while we are in the aircraft and I see two niner decimal nine or eight I will use that one so now your and you can get, uh, select whether the runway is dry or wet so it's a little bit rainy at the moment but it's not that wet so I think we will be fine with dry so we have a second page that we need to go and this is where you calculate your takeoff weight gross weight and um, we will take a look at these which you can uh, calculate here fuel management that's your fuel on board performance menu we have set up is already done and you can enter more wind information for different cruise levels which we can, we will look at and the transition altitude for Oslo is 5000 which we cannot change at the moment so that's a little bit unfortunate let's go back oops wrong page and let's take a look at the performance initialization page so here we need to enter our passenger count which I have already calculated but the mod is taking the passenger count and each passenger is a default 190 pounds so I need to bring that passenger way to close to 190 which I believe is going to be 42 percent I think that will do and then enter that we have five passengers ah, I keep going to the wrong screen five passengers oops no 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 this aircraft cannot carry that many just five okay and then the cargo which as you see here zero fuel weight is here your gross weight is 1405 which is not matching and I'm going to need to I have to need to correct the center of gravity by adding more baggage to the rear or front I think that's front so 590 let's make these numbers even so that we can do the math so we have 790 pounds of cargo which we need to also enter here 790 and see what it brings up 14795 15138 so to compensate that the difference between 14795 is we have 205 to 18, 15 and then 137 so 200, 300, 337, 342 if I add 300 more to 42 more to the cargo which will make it 1032 it should give us a and if this happens to you as well all you need to do is resize the window and sometimes you, you cannot click the cockpit buttons so one three two so it should match 1537 15 133 so I am losing 100 pounds which I have to there make that this and it should now 15 wrong button 15137 so our gross weight is set now we can calculate our takeoff go to next page and now we have our V speeds and we are taking the flaps 15 you can set it to 0 if you like and this I'm not sure what this does um, 
have to look it up now you have your V speeds when you hit the send button your V speeds are transferred to your PFD which is quite handy so that's performance part done and the other options you have is you have your altitude constraints you can display here if you like which is handy you can display your speed constraints this is a work in progress it's not done missed approach they are working on that too you can display your low nav aids or high nav aids if you like and nearest airports and intersections as well so that's what this menu does this is not operational I believe at the moment uh, MFD data is not operational messages this is your direct to if you want to travel to a waypoint directly in your flight plan you can by this page which will take you through each waypoint you have and you press that and the route will be updated directly to that this is your uh, index which is your menu GNSS this is your GPS position and we will talk about GNSS and what that means uh, in the second part your frequency is under construction your fixes and the information about those these are navigation aids or nav fixes uh, hold point information like if you do a missed approach where you are going to hold so on and so forth I haven't tested this part yet um, War DME control War VOR usage yes or no you can change that in the future hopefully when the developer finishes this part and GNSS control enabled enabled and you cannot disable them yet and the last thing I want to cover here is your radio frequencies which you can tune from here so your COM1 radio if we take a look at the screen if we want to tune the ground which is 121.605 121.605 I can put this to standby and recall that oops I can also put this to rather than standby and if it's in standby you need to go up to your MFD menus and you can transfer that nav frequency from here um, for the nav radio which is this guy over here your com radio you need to type it in here and it will tune automatically to that frequency as you see uh, which it's not doing because we are having some problems with uh, ATC connection so but that's how you set your calm frequencies 1 and 2 and uh, your standby your active nav 1 nav 2 so on and so forth and this is your transponder where you change your scrap code that's given by the ATC that's your ADF frequency and this is your uh, TCAS mod which you can not change at the moment but you can hopefully in the future when the developer finishes this mod and that's all about the FMC in this aircraft so from there you we can I think ask for clearance and start our um, taxi to the runway for our departure which we will do in the second episode well guys I think this has been a longer video than I anticipated sorry about that if it was too long for you uh, in the next part we are going to follow this flight plan and take a look at the departure take a look at the arrival and the RNAV approach and what RNAV is uh, in general so that we cover that piece of information which we haven't covered so far we covered the VOR and ILS approaches but not the RNAV one so we will discuss that in the next part if you stumbled upon this video in YouTube 
this is a tutorial series which has I think this is the 12th ep episode we started very basic with the G1000 then stepped up to G3000 and finally to the Cessna uh, I suggest you to go and watch all the episodes before you watch this one and if you haven't subscribed to the channel I highly suggest you to subscribe and turn on the, not the notifications to get notified for the future episodes of the tutorial series alright guys I think this is going to be it thank you all for all your support your comments your questions so on so forth you are my field you keep me going until next video please stay safe and I will be seeing you in the next part of this second part uh, two-part tutorial series for Cessna Citation CJ4 take care